So for this presentation, we're going to cover the problem statement um, and the data that we use, um, as well as the technology. I'm uh, going to give a demonstration um, and then followed by the summary of the pros and the cons. So the problem that we faced was we had an application that we were developing. Um, this was a web application um, targeted towards community outreach uh, in the state of Tennessee uh, for members of the community who didn't have access to um, information regarding activities that they could be part of. Our application was in the GitHub repository um, and we had identified a WS EC2 Linux instance as an instance to host the website um, for our testing and potentially for production. And thus we were looking for a deployment option that would allow constant deployment as soon as a commit was applied into the EC2 instance, whereupon we would build and um, publish the website. So for this exercise, we identified AWS Code Deploy um, as a potential service uh, to execute this. Um, it is offered by Amazon deploying applications from S3 repositories or GitHub into an AWS instance. You can also create, um, as part of the deployment configuration, um, triggers that would notify users of any deployment failures or instance failures. Instance failures via an AWS SNS queue. For this exercise, we didn't have any data set or code that we had to develop. Um, the only code being the application code that we had existing in GitHub. After creating the instance in uh, EC2, we had to run an update on the OS um, to make sure everything was set for deployment. So there are three main steps in executing deployment for and creating a deployment configuration for our application. The first step was configuring a Amazon code deploy um, so this involves putting together a deployment configuration which has um, instructions on what instances to deploy to and what are the rules for deployment in terms of one at a time, uh, mm, all of them at once, and what constitutes a deployment failure. The second step was creating webhooks in GitHub which would allow automatic deployment of the application from GitHub into our instance based off of any successful commits. And the last update was updating and creating a file in our solution that had specifications on which files to move as part of deployment and where to move them within each instance. So for the code deployment configuration, Amazon has two main options. Um, the first option is a custom um, creation of a deployment configuration. And this is based off of you having an existing application and an EC2 instance. The second option assumes that you are new to AWS code deploy and to AWS in general. And so creates an instance, creates three instances for you, as well as providing a sample application um, to deploy so you can see what the results are. In our case, even though we had an application residing in GitHub, um, we opted to go with the sample application because it configured the service roles and the agents that are required as part of our deployment. Now I'm just going to switch and show the configurations that we had put in place for our deployment. So to start off, um, our existing configuration um, is placed under uh, a general 
container called community tables, which is also the name of the application that we're developing. So in this community tables, you will notice uh, we have a community table deployment group. And this deployment group um, has all the information regarding our required deployment. Um, one of the things that we have in place, as I mentioned before, was a trigger which would populate, which would send a message to the AWS SNS queue. Um, in any case of a deployment failure or success, or if it's been stopped or rolled back, or if an instance has failed. It also creates a service role, as I had mentioned, and the service role has access to the EC2 instances and can deploy the application and the app deployment is run under the service role um, from our source, which is either in GitHub or in S AWS S3 and into the EC2 instance. This is a um, summary of the last deployment that we did, which was on the 9th of December. Going into the configuration group that we have, deployment configuration group, um, you can edit uh, the instances which you want to deploy, and this is based off of the key that's associated, the tags that are associated to those instances. So in our case, our ta the tag that we have has a key called name and uh, the value of community tables. Further down, you can create any additional triggers that you need um, and any alarms. Uh, so these are based off of uh, metrics that you may require um, and can be set in Amazon CloudWatch. We have it set so that any time deployment fails, um, it is rolled back. And that way we make sure no code is deployed into, into the EC2 instance. And the last section details the service role, ARN, uh, which has access, which grants AWS Code Deploy access to the instances to which to deploy. As part of configuring the deployment um, application and the deployment group, um, AWS also created three instances under which the application can be deployed. Um, all of them are standard AWS Linux instances, as we had specified, and have a T1 micro instance type. application that we were deploying resides in GitHub, as mentioned. Um, it is a JavaScript web application, and for our deployment, we had to provide an app spec YML file. This file, which is in the root folder, specifies where in our instances to deploy the application, and the source of the code. So in this case, um, the single backslash specifies that every file in the root folder, so every file and folder, should be deployed. And it should be deployed to the EC2 users home folder under the table, under the folder community tables. It also specifies what kind of environment to deploy to. Um, or what kind of environment it is deploying into, in which case it is a Linux instance. And so, to showcase how this would work, I'm just going to quickly show you the webhooks that are in place. 
So we have two webhooks, one for AWS code deploy and one for GitHub auto deployment. The first one grants GitHub access to your AWS account um, based off of the secret key and the access key provided. It also specifies which configuration to use, which in our case is the community table group. The second configuration is the GitHub auto deployment. And this is the service which monitors your repository. And anytime a commit occurs, knows to call the AWS code deploy um, service to start deployment. Going back to the home folder, if I was to make a change to one of these files, specifically the readme, if I was to add, for example, let me just click edit, change this number to three, and commit the change. As soon as I commit the change, the service, the GitHub deployment service, will call the AWS code deploy service to trigger deployment. As you can see in this case, our deployment is in progress. And it should be deploying to the three instances that we specified. If you navigate to the drop down, there is a summary which tells you all the deployments in progress. And in our case, the deployment that we just executed succeeded. This deployment provides you with the commit ID which was used as this deployment. So if you go back to our GitHub and we navigate to our application, we can confirm that the commit that we specified, which is C7817, is the same one that's specified, which is C7817. And we can confirm that it's deployed to all three instances. Going back, we can identify the DNS and go into the instance. And we can confirm that the deployment has occurred successfully. As you can see, the community tables folder was created in the home directory of the EC2 user. And if we navigate into the folder, we 
we can see that all our files have been moved. In addition, we also have an SNS queue that has been set up under which any changes in the deployment or any initiated deployment will lead to a message being published to this topic. And I'm going to use a dummy email account that we have set up for this demo to show the message that has come in. As you noticed, it sends two emails, one regarding the deployment that's been created, and one regarding the successful deployment of the application. So, in summary, the good thing about AWS Code Deploy is it's quick and easy setup based off of the sample application guide. Once you've used that to configure the instances and the services, you can change the, default, the configuration so that it can source from your GitHub repository, as I've shown, or you can do an ad hoc deployment which you can specify where you wanted to do so from S3 or from GitHub. The disadvantage is it currently only supports S3 and GitHub as the source of the data and there is no feature to specify how frequent deployment occurs. In an ideal scenario, uh, deployment would normally occur at the end of the day after all the changes and commits have done instead of continuously. If AWS EC2 instance is the desired um, hosting service, then Code Deploy is a valid uh, service for deployment code. If coupled with AWS Code Build, you can get complete build and, and, and deployment of the application um, so that you don't have to navigate into the EC2 instance to build the solution and deploy it. The roadblock, as I mentioned earlier, would be the lack of integration with other third-party data sources, as this would be helpful for projects that do not host the data in AWS, so in GitHub or AWS S3.